Hello. Um, can you hear me well? Is it okay? Yep. Okay. So my name is Melissa Moroslark, and uh, I'd like to welcome you all to the city of The Hague for the ones that are new to it and for the ones that have been living here for a while. I love the city. And um, I'm a student here at uh, Leiden University, uh, International Studies. And um, I study um, many things. It's a multidisciplinary approach. So I study economics, I study politics, I study history, and I study culture. So it's something that I believe is very important, but it's something that data really needs. And I'll let you know about this just in a little bit. Um, I'm a student fellow at the Peace Lab at the Center for Innovation, and I'm an intern and I do policy research for uh, UN Global Pulse. So um, it started not too long ago, and it actually started in class when uh, we heard a lecture by the co-founder of the Peace Informatics Lab, and, and he presented a project called the Peace Deals Revisited. And it was the first time that I heard about the possibility of combining data and combining peace. So I was taken aback and um, I kind of had to let it sink because I had never thought about it. And the project, which I later joined because I was very interested and they, they needed students to, to help out uh, um, with a bunch of things, um, uh, was um, a project that um, aimed to figure out or try to measure the impact of a peace deal. And that at first can be seem very complicated because how do you measure impact? And they came up or we came up with a framework which was looking at data and looking two years back and two years forward from the peace deal and looking at what had happened. And in order to do so, we built up a database with things with um, so lots of data streams from economics, from history, from social perspectives, things to do about law, um, things to do about the environment, basically everything that you can actually think about. And then you combine it into a database. And then what you do is that you interview your database. And how do you do that? Well, you first of all, you ask questions that and you include terms that you might be interested in. For example, you look at ways and accountability, at a governance, a government effectiveness, and then you see what correlations come up. And it's important to say that correlations do not mean causation, and correlations just point out things that you actually have to look into. So um, by asking these questions, you get an answer, but with this answer, you have to ask a lot more questions. And you actually have to, um, yeah, I think that's uh, Evan. Um, <laughs> you have to keep um, asking questions and questions. And that um, is where I actually see a potential for people that study international studies, because we have a very diverse background. And that's what data really needs, because obviously it needs the data specialists and the people that can crunch the data and create the databases. But it also needs expertise from the people around the data that can tell them what does this mean in a political way? What does this mean in an economic way? What does this mean from an environmental point of view? So um, that was one of the projects that I worked on. And then I moved on to working at uh, Datapool. And Datapool, again, is another database. But uh, what's interesting of this database is that uh, it combines data from the authorities and institutions, from business, and from civics, so from the people. And that's very interesting because there's being a shift from ownership of data. First of all, it was the governments that, that had their, how many people live here in the city, how many people are moving from here to here, but increasingly it's the businesses that, that have the ownership of this data and the people themselves that are creating it. So I believe it's very important to have all this data and in real time because it can inform decision making. And it's very important for, our, for people that govern us and for people to be inform, infor, informed of what's actually happening. So data pool is a great tool for that. And through the knowledge that I acquired um, in these two projects, I was able to apply it to another project that I'm working on, which is the internship at uh, UN Global Pulse. And uh, UN Global Pulse, it's, uh, it's an innovation and information um, project created by the Secretary General, 
and um, and they try to gather and harness the opportunities of data. They they look into data and if it can be used for development, for peace, for security, and and they do so with with very innovative if not innovative ways with a bunch of, a bunch of different projects that I'm sure you can and check out and you'll find really interesting and their graphics are, are really cool I have to say, and um, for them I'm. Um, I'm working at the Data for Climate Action project, a challenge, uh, which will be presented at the, at the Conference of the Parties in, in Paris this coming November, December. So what we're doing is we're trying to mobilize data from businesses in a scheme, a scheme called uh, Data Philanthropy. And uh, the need for this is that with, I mean, I was talking about data pool, how, how they have data from, from businesses, but it's um, the data that businesses have, it's very useful because it can help assess the vulnerabilities and you will be able to better calculate the exposure of, of what is happening. So um, to do so, we look at, uh, at um, and how businesses and how can they give up, no, not give up, but share their data for, um, for research purposes. Um, so that's a little bit of my work, but uh, of course this is, sounds a little abstract and I, I want to say how it's useful for all of us and, and, and the things that we should uh, be watching out for. And um, I think like the first time that I had to do it, um, not just now, because now I really had to think of, of what do I do and why do I do it and how can I explain it? And by explaining it to you, I have to explain it to myself. But it was when I was in the supermarket back home for Christmas with my mother and we were just strolling around the store and, and she asked me, Melissa, but, but what do you do apart from studying? I mean, I know you do something with data. And I kind of, it took me a while, a few more aisles walking down when I was thinking, okay, what do I actually do? And what we try and do at the Center for Innovation and uh, for the UN Global Pulse Project is that we try to understand the world with numbers because numbers tell stories. You just have to unpack them again and be able to, basically, I guess it's, I, I was very interested in critical theory in my studies. So with critical theory, you kind of, subtract the layers of what is happening, and that's what you have to do with data. And um, that's why there is a very, um, there's a need for an expertise, not, to, like I said before, not from, only from the technicians, but also from the people that understand politics and economics and society. And that's why it's very important for, for all of us to be involved. And I would have never thought two years ago that I'd be working with numbers because I was not very good at maths. but. Data is not just numbers. Data is stories in numbers, and there is a need to to unravel them and to figure out what, what they're telling us. So um, thank you very much, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them.